I'd be work with students for years and then a point comes of panic and it's just like it's like now they're sliding down the mountain and then suddenly they're mm -hmm. just going to kick it into reverse mm -hmm. and it's like whoa <laughs> and that doesn't work either you know the gears are not <laughs> meant for a reverse in, in that position you know mm. it's just grinding emotionally it feels that way so you know you start to see again more and more that the value of the exposing uh, we were going to it today Helena just came and she just said oh I got these crazy thoughts and we just joined together in, in it and it was quite freeing it was quite a freeing experience but it was like you know it was just this it becomes more you see it more as the value and, and of healing with the exposing it doesn't seem that way at the beginning it seems like it's torture like it's gonna come back like oh this is bad stuff it's gonna come back and hit me from all sides mm -hmm. it's just more like oh yeah this is great <coughs> just tell everybody how dark and unworthy and rotten I am mm -hmm. you know and it feels like and that's just gonna come back on me big time but but actually it's the beginning of true healing it's like the very cusp it's the cusp of, of true healing and it gets more the momentum grows and you, you get more comfortable with it and and there will come a point where you'll think huh, how could I have ever conceived of holding anything back or holding on to anything it will it will get to that point but this is the most difficult at the beginning yeah it's the most difficult well uh I don't know that it's got redeeming value <coughs> commensurate with the suffering. Yeah, if you put it in the context though, it's like there came a point with all the thing with the drinking and everything where you you might say that that you know that spiritually you reached a point where you began to outgrow it you know, with maturity, spiritual maturity or so on and so forth and not that it, this, the thoughts don't come back like you said but, but you seem to have turned a corner and you start to see that with everything it wouldn't be anything, I mean it would, you wouldn't necessarily you know if you heard about a mystic or saint that just fasted and then fasted longer for a period, and then fasted longer, and then just quit eating. It's not that you would say, I really admire that, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. for me. You know, it, it would have to be something that you began to experience more, as I call it, like an outgrowing, rather than just taking some kind of a stance for or against something, or making a behavioral change. You can't leave with the form. You know, the form, the behavior always has to follow follow the state of mind, so there's a sense of congruity, a sense of alignment there, otherwise it will just yeah. pop out. The same with the drinking, you probably know people, including yourself, that just, you might have even said the words, I'm going to stop drinking, before you actually, you know, were able to kind of outgrow it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that thing as well, you know, it's, it can be tempting to just take stands for or against things, but as you open up into purpose, as you open up into exposing and clearing and, you know, direct, open, honest communication and everything, it seems very new, almost like startling at the beginning, but then as you practice it and practice it and practice it, it is part of that outgrowing. And the things that seem to be tormenting before or vices or struggles or difficulties, they just, they become more and more peripheral you do literally outgrow them. Mm. And you just have to be willing to continue to take the, the steps. Both intuitively feel things out and also to share things like, well, here's what I'm thinking. Or, I did this, this, and this. Well, why did you do this? Well, it just seemed like the thing to do. You know, maybe on reflection it wasn't the best thing to do, but, mm. but I, at the time, you know, there was no big red flag or warning or no, you know, stop, stop now. So it's just, you know, it's, you do have to be gentle on yourself and just take it step by step with that and 
and that's what these devotionals are for. It sounds like, like maybe you were dealing with some emotions around a few things and now just when the whole idea of relationship starts to come up and get questioned, it can get really overwhelming, like, oh man, you know, I thought I was on the, some inroads with a few things, but you know, that's not something that I, I had on my plate or was really ready. And that's where this talking it through and talking it through, you know, feeling it out is it's helpful. It's nothing that's yanked away from you. It's not like the Spirit's going to just yank all the concepts away at once. It's more of like a, an outgrowing, an outgrowing occurs, a little more outgrowing, and that's, that's the way that it, it continues. Thanks for your openness. That's, that's very refreshing. Is, is there any releasing that without letting go of the specialness? I mean, I can't see how, how you can let go of jealousy without letting go of the specialness. Yes, it's synonymous, but that's, that's one form that it takes, yeah. is jealousy. When, when Jenny and I were working a number of years ago, it was that, when that came up and was identified, it was like, well, it was a life pattern, but it was like being jealous of your sister, you know, it was, yeah. it was just that. And so it was kind of identified like, wow, this will be my, my pathway to God, mm -hmm. is through the, the release of it. And sometimes it's a conscious pattern, <laughs> you know, it's conscious. And then other times it just, it just kind of, it's quite unconscious, and then it just emerges almost in a shocking in a way that's when Kirsten and I went down the first time to South America, we stayed with a friend of mine and and uh, in term, worldly terms she was very beautiful. She was kind of like a Miss World uh, in terms of figure and, and so on and so forth and been in movies and different things and, and so and she was always just very open and flirting and just jumping on my lap and, you know, and, and Kirsten said she got in touch with jealousy, but she had kind of almost prided herself that she just was not a jealous person. And had 30 years of uh, evidence to prove it. Like, I don't get jealous. You know, if a boyfriend wants to do something, I, I just chop the boyfriend off. You know, <laughs> just, That's not jealousy. You know, I'm not going to get into jealousy. She just never had gone that way, and, and yet, with this woman Lily, you know, it was just, just, she said, it's like a green monster, was just all that was needed to really begin the process, like, okay, I, I can start to take a look at this. But it was just so intense, it was wildly intense. Yeah, it's very, intense. It, it's insanity, you know, at a, at a very final level.